feel like I've always wanted to be good at chess. I'm rated 750. I, I play a good amount of chess. I watch a good amount of chess videos, but you know, I'm, I haven't improved very much. You know who has improved a lot? Hans Niemann, 19-year-old chess player, has had the most meteoric rise in chess history. And some people are speculating that maybe it's a little too meteoric. Maybe he cheated his way to the top. It's not just randoms on the internet saying this. Uh, it's the greatest player in the world, Magnus Carlsen. Unprecedented moves from Magnus, very sportsman-like player in general, so the chess world is in chaos, and I have no idea what to believe. I don't know whether I think Hans is innocent or guilty. What I do know, I'm seeing speculation online about how it would be possible to cheat and over the board, if it would be possible to cheat and over the board. I think you might be shocked at how easy and how cheap it is. You can follow a pretty rudimentary design that you can hide pretty much anywhere in your body. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Not so that you can recreate it, though because this won't work if you recreate it. Tournament directors are too smart for you after watching this video. Sorry. But yeah, basically our design is we're gonna take a Bluetooth microcontroller, we're gonna power it with a small battery, and then we're gonna, we're gonna buzz a buzzer that you conceal somewhere on your body so that you can feel it. Other people can't hear it or detect it. Uh, and that's just gonna give you like a binary string. Have some protocol, right? If it's like A4 that you need to move, maybe you buzz like once, you delay, and then it's one, two, three, four in rapid succession. And you're like, okay, I gotta move A4. And it tells you move to A5, so it's boom, 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 boom. You move to A5, you know what to do. All right, so let me let me go through the design. I'll show you the, the literal components that I ordered on Amazon. Try not to dox myself. This is the core of our design. This is called a Seed Studio. It currently costs uh, $16.99 on Amazon, and it's just a little chip that has Bluetooth. Our output in our case is just gonna be a little buzzer. It's gonna be a little buzzer like you have in your phone. You can buy 15 of these for $12.99. Um, so this brings our running cost to like 28 bucks, I think. Um, although we were going to have 14 haptic motors left over. And then we just need some, some power for this whole thing. So I just, I spent $16 on a five pack of small lithium ion batteries. Honestly, I think I can do better on the batteries if I were to use like watch batteries or something, but I just know that this is gonna work with the board that we're using and just know that you can do better on the battery. As long as no one can hear and as long as you can feel it and as long as that signal can come wirelessly and the device is like hard to find on your body, I think we're gonna have a pretty compelling case of, of how you can cheat with such a device. So. Let's get into it. First, I wired up the battery to the board itself. And you can see that there's a little blink program running on it, that LED turning on and off. That means that, okay, the board is running some code, it's working, it's receiving power, all good. Then I just connected the buzzer to uh, ground into one of the output pins and away we go. We have the buzzer uh, working, connected and buzzing. So this is, this is what the device looks like. I don't know if you can tell because it might just look like my hand shaking but the buzzer is actually buzzing right now. It's it's pulsing on really, really quickly. Essentially just like a blink script, if you can see, it turns the, it, it literally says LED, it's not LED, it's buzzer. But it turns on D10, which is, if you look at the back of this, this is connected to 10 and ground. And as you can see, thing is, you might be like, well, that's pretty obvious. You can probably hear it. Um, here's a cool thing. If I just change this number from, let's say 0 0.5 to 0 0.05, you can barely feel it. You definitely can't hear it, but you can still feel it. And you can tune this, right? So maybe 0 0.05, I think is a little bit too, uh, a little bit too faint, but 0 0.1, oh, now that feels good. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write a, a script that hopefully taps into the Bluetooth low energy on this thing so I can start to communicate with it, turn this buzzer on and off uh, via Bluetooth. Proof of concept here. So. Here we have our device, right? As you can see, it's not connected to a computer or anything. This is connected to my phone via Bluetooth. On my phone, I have this app that is essentially just like a video game controller. And check this out. When I press and hold on one, this button here, it vibrates. When I stop, it stops. So now I can put this anywhere on my body, right? And let's say I have it like under my leg here. And someone in the audience or on a stream or whatever could press this and I would feel the vibration no one would be able to hear, this thing is super faint, uh, and they can just send me information. I could just send myself information. So with that implemented, the core of what we're building is done. I mean, after that, it's just a software problem. You just have to have someone feeding stockfish moves into that app, or to build the app itself so that it just looks at your stream and feeds you stockfish moves. I promise you, this is easy. What I'm gonna do is show you how I would affix this to my body. Uh, no, no, it, get your mind out of the gutter. I'm not gonna put it up my 
Uh, I'm gonna attach this to my foot. I think that the perfect way to do this is to hide it between my toes. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to CVS now, pick up some band-aids to affix this to myself. Yo, this is a warning right now. If you don't wanna see my ugly feet, skip this part of the video. You've been warned. Don't complain. Don't leave a little comment being like, oh, your feet are so gross. I told you. I told you, skip this part of the video. Hey, yo. So hear me out here, right? Get that in there. Get that in there. You will not be able to tell a thing. All right, so on the toe, check that out. Can you even tell? Can you tell that there's anything there? Like, be honest. It's all there right? It's all stuck on there. And yes, if someone were to make me take my shoes and socks off, they'd probably be able to tell. But guess what? Like, I can walk around on this just like normal. I can jump. No one would be able to tell, especially if I have a sock and, and shoes on. This is going to pass every detector test, right? And like, you know, you can barely even see even up close. And again, let me just remind you, you can make this a more compact form factor. This is just like, like what you can do for like 20 bucks on Amazon. And we're just gonna, we're gonna reconnect to it now and uh, I'm gonna show you that it still works. So I'll go controller, control pad. Yeah, I can feel it. I can feel every little buzz. Can you hear? No one's telling anyone to take their socks off, to take their shoes off. I mean, that's invasive, that's weird, but under the current settings, like unless it sets off a metal detector, which I'm telling you it won't, or at least there's a way to get around that because we have examples of phones getting through metal detectors and so on. This is well documented online. Uh, well, you're kind of just stuck with the fact that people can have devices like this on them. And that's a pretty bad world. So I'm gonna disassemble the foot version of this. I'm gonna show you um, what it would look like uh, elsewhere on my body. Guess what, if I put a sock on, will you be able to tell at all? Can you guys tell that I'm wearing that cheating device. We'll attach it just to the back of my knee here. Who's gonna, who's gonna feel that? It's barely noticeable. If you just like stick it on there, right? And then you flex while you're being patted down. How can you tell? The, those sirens, that's the horny jail coming for you in the comments. Don't, don't make it weird, bro. Passes the visual check, passes the pat down check, how, how are you gonna detect that if it passes a metal detector? I think you probably had this in your hair, to be honest. If you have like long curly hair like me and somebody else. If you like taped it down to your scalp and it just sticks in there. Okay, maybe not. So I'm editing the video, right? And I was thinking about other places to hide this. And it occurred to me that the best place to hide this is literally behind the button uh, on a pair of, of pants, right? I mean, I've taken these shorts through airport security before. This is a metal button. It doesn't trigger it. Um, you could hide this, which is essentially a metal button in, in form, especially if you get the battery down. You just hide it behind a button. And then if you trigger a metal detector, you're like, oh, it's the button in my pants. If you really tried, right, what you would do is you would sew this into your pants and it would just feel like the back of the button and then the buzzer you would be able to feel against your waistband. This is probably the approach that I would take. And if I were to do this project further, uh, I would create a pair of pants that, that just had uh, a grandmaster in them. I have a grandmaster in my pants. I'm, I'm kind of compelled to do this, so I might do a follow-up video. All right, so I wanna share with you my perspective on what can be done about this. So the first thing that can be done that I think is really low-hanging fruit is just to increase stream delays to a point where it's infeasible to retrieve data from an outside accomplice or an outside computer without also sending information out. However, that is subverted simply through the addition of something like this. This is a push button switch. Um, you can click it and it sends a signal. You can attach it to the exact same device uh, and then you can send information out. So now you have bi-directional flow and using the exact same communication protocol, right? If I wanna send A4, I could do one, one, two, three, four. Using the exact same protocol, as long as I can push the button accurately and record all of the moves, then I'll be able to get information from a computer in real time. Uh, and in fact, in this scenario even, we don't even need to have uh, we don't even need to have an accomplice. We don't need to have an external computer. This device doesn't even need to have any connectivity whatsoever. So anyone talking about radio blocking, they're wrong. 
uh, this can just be a self-contained computer unit and uh, obviously you'd need a, a little bit more of a powerful chip than this to run something like Stockfish, but you'd be able to just get moves back uh, by pushing these buttons to record the game state and then listening to these vibrations to get the move that you need to make. And you might say, well, it'd be weird to have this push button switch on you. There's other sensors that you could use. I could put an electrode on my calf and then I could just flex my calf in the right pattern to transmit the moves. And that would be really straightforward to do. So how do you protect against that? Honestly, it's really hard to imagine doing it without, uh, without invading the privacy of chess players. It's like, how do you prevent people from smuggling devices into prisons? Uh, you don't. People get phones into prisons all the time, even though they do violate the privacy of people going into prisons. Yeah, smuggling is just a thing. You can make it a lot harder for people to smuggle, though, and thereby increase the risk uh, and so the risk to reward ratio becomes a little bit more balanced. And I think that this is the perspective that governing bodies of chess tournaments should be thinking through. In my opinion, you'll never really be able to eliminate the threat of somebody cheating. Uh, if someone's truly motivated enough to cheat, I think they'll find a way. But you will be able to increase the risk that anyone who attempts to cheat will be caught thereby balancing the risk to reward ratio. And so as long as, you know, we don't have billion dollar chess tournaments, people think it's not worth it. Because the chance of being caught goes up so much higher, the chance that they actually try and cheat goes down proportionately. Whether that means more sensitive scanners, such as like airport level security, whether that means uh, like pat downs, which I don't know, I, I'm not really a security professional. I think the best move is to talk to people who it's their jobs to find things like this. Um, and just to, to increase the risk in that way, right? Because once again, it's not gonna be possible to, to get rid of all of the risk of somebody cheating. There's always going to be, if someone's truly motivated enough, there's always a risk of them cheating, right? But if you increase the risk enough, then you can decrease the probability that anyone is cheating, therefore creating a fairer game for all. You wanna be able to celebrate improvement, right? Like we should be looking at Hans Niemann and be like, wow, that's awesome that he's the fastest improving player of all time. Not like, hmm, he's the fastest improving player of all time? I wonder if he's legit. That's just not a good look for the sport. All right, I wanna end this video by repeating, please do not cheat in chess. I do not endorse this. I discourage cheating in chess. Don't do it. It makes the sport worse for everyone. It makes you a worse chess player. It's just, it's terrible all around. It's not worth it. You will regret it, I promise you. So just don't do it. Like, look at me, I'm literally telling a million people on the internet that I'm a 750 rated player. Guess what, I don't care. Like there's no point in looking like the best in the world unless you're actually the best in the world. It, it doesn't make any sense. There's no point in looking good unless you're actually good. Because if you can't back it up, then what are you doing, right? Like it, you're just going for the image. The point of being good at something is the, the process in getting there. It's the reward in working hard and seeing that pay off. There's no reward in cheating. Uh, it's much more worth it to grind through, to suck at something, to do what it takes to become good, to become great, to maybe even become the best. And when you do that, well, it's gonna feel a whole lot better than if you just relied on a stupid little device like this. Oh, shoot. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to subscribe. My name is John Fish. I'll see you again soon.